Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Jumper T Pro, the uh, Express LRS edition. So it's got Express LRS inside. I also have the 4-in-1 edition. And I got this one too. Why so many? Well, we'll get into that, but let's start with a little bit of stick cam. I always like to include a little bit of flight footage. I think it spices up the videos and the main reason why I make videos is because I enjoy flying so much. And this gives you an opportunity if you haven't seen one of my stick cams before, which are generally only in radio reviews or transmitter reviews. Uh, I am a kind of a hybrid pincher. I didn't start out this way. I started out thumbing uh, some five plus years ago. And after some period of time, I can't really remember if it was six months or it was a year. At some point in time, I felt like the progress just wasn't there anymore. I was kind of stuck. And so I tried uh, hybrid pinching. Um, some might just say it's regular pinching. I think most would consider it hybrid pinching. And after, I don't know, some period of time, a couple of weeks, I felt more comfortable and I also felt like my flight was progressing. I felt more precise. Uh, so I guess the lesson is if you thumb and you feel like you've plateaued or you're just not uh, getting where you want to be, maybe give pinching a try. It's not going to come to you probably that switch in the first flight or 10. You might have to take, you know, 20, 30, 50 flights before you catch up to where you were on thumbing because there's a learning process. And then possibly you might see that you start progressing again. And also if you're a pincher or a hybrid pincher, maybe you need to switch over to thumbing and give that a go. There's no one way to get this stuff done. We should have fun and uh, successful flights are always more fun. So maybe switching our grip uh, can be one of those ways that we enjoy some more fun. And so a little bit about this uh, just in the hand. So this one doesn't have the heft of the Zorro. If, if you saw my Zorro review, uh, obviously that some part of that feel uh, comes from just the weight. It's a smaller, more compact radio. So it's going to have less weight by nature. Uh, so if you grab this and you grab a Zorro, you might say one's heavy and one's light. You might say one's big, one's small. Uh, they're essentially very, very similar gamepad style of radios. I, I do think the construction of the Zorro feels more solid to me. Uh, that could be a potential placebo. But if I knock on the plastic on the Jumper T-Pro, it just feels like there's some pieces in there that are kind of moving around and it just doesn't feel like they're everything secured inside and outside quite as much as uh, the Zorro does. But if you're looking for a compact radio, this might be the one because I'm not certain they're going to be selling the T-Lite anymore. So T-Pro might be your choice as far as jumper radios go and a small compact radio. The reason why I have so many is because the first one I got, which is the one on my hand, I, I marked it with a P. Uh, the module that you put in here and then you attach this, if you've got batteries, it powers this module uh, without the radio being on. Yeah, we're getting power. Also, my screen doesn't work anymore. I think I need to work on flashing that because part of the troubleshooting, I was doing some flashing and tinkering with this. So I might have uh, a firmware fix I need to apply to this. But as you can see, no light on the screen, no power down here, but the module powers on. So jumper, uh, they did find that they had at least one more case of that. So uh, reviewers curse or what have you. Uh, so they sent me a replacement four in one. I marked it four in one. See how neat and tidy my handwriting is. And so you can see that if you have one, you have this little module that it comes with uh, that you plug in here and then you screw in. So that's a lot cleaner than we saw previously uh, with the Jumper T-Lite, which is a, a, a radio of mine that I really enjoyed. But this is the Express LRS edition, marked it with a much nicer E back here. It also comes with this little attachment so that you can run a different sort of antenna. Say you don't want this particular kind of antenna. It's still, you can still fold it down, but say you wanted to put an antenna like this on it. Uh, you could do that with a little attachment that they include with the kit. And this is how that back plate or the module adapter uh, comes to you. It's pretty simple. Just a couple of little three screws. It also comes with these gimbal protectors, which it's made of plastic and it's a little bit loose. And it comes with this box and then it's got this little piece of foam to help keep it from wobbling back and forth and a strap to hold everything down. I think the similarities in this radio, some people talked about it was a, a DJI remote, uh, got married to it and had a baby with the Tango 2 remote, so it's got similarities. But we see this sort of roller style for manipulating the menus, quite popular. So I wouldn't say it's specific to the Tango 2. Maybe the Tango 2 made it uh, popular. Uh, so these are what you use for navigation. We've got our two trims, we've got our power, we've got our lanyard. Of course, we've got our sticks, and then we've got a momentary switch here, momentary switch here, fold that down, and then we've got 
three position switches, three position switches, and then we have these rollers up here. Also up top, you've got your USB port uh, for charging, which uh, works pretty well. And then you've also got your aux port there for uh, your trainer port. And then behind here, I always struggle to show this, underneath here is where you store your battery. So you've got 18650s in here. I can't quite pull it up with my fingernails, so I have to use a little piece like this. And I pry it up so I can get my finger underneath it. So these are where you store your batteries, one in each handle. And getting these back on, I found it was best to start up here to put the grips back on. Uh, that made it simpler for me. I kind of got these lined up because if I went from the outside in, I kind of struggled to get this round part uh, lined up with that hole and get it placed in there. But, you know, you do what you need to do in order to be able to get it in there and get it uh, secured so it doesn't bother you. But that's how I've been doing it as I've been playing with this radio. Okay, I finally got it back together. Thankfully, we don't have to get in there very often. I don't think I mentioned it, but obviously we have an antenna here that that folds down or we can bring it up however we want to. I think the biggest showstopper for me, well, there's a couple of points I think they're really important to bring up. One, these are momentary switches. So that, that for me, I tend to arm and disarm with this hand and this finger. Um, so this would be a little bit of an issue. I'd probably have to disarm and, and arm up here which is fine. Jeez, I've got something underneath my nail. Uh, I had struggled with the Tango 2 and doing that same sort of functionality. Now the Tango 2, they weren't momentary, they were actually buttons, uh, but I still wanted to have this sort of toggle for quick disarming. Uh, one of the things in running micros is being able to disarm quick, I think helps them live longer when you're flying a, a whoop or a, a micro that's uh, you know just flying around your backyard. Uh, also, let's turn it on. I wanna go through these real quick. I'm sure it's been discovered by others. And as we turn it on, it's going to say Edge TX because, yeah, it does. It comes with Edge TX. And I believe these radios are coming with Edge TX because of the internal Express Alaris module. So I've got the channel monitor up uh, just to kind of show you how these buttons work. But as you can see, it just kind of turns one on, turns one off. But you can't have each one on independently. If I touch this next one over, let me see if I can do it with this hand. It turned this one off and turns that one on. So I'm not certain how useful that is. I'm not even certain if we can use it for, say, our VTX power. We might need to do some fancy uh, programming within the logical switches in order to make this a little bit more functional. Uh, I can see where people might want that use for uh, various purposes. Uh, we also have tr trim switches down here. You can see we get little beeps and they tell us when it's centered. So our navigation is all pretty uh, straightforward as far as uh, typical radio, typical buttons. I don't think there'd be a lot that you would ask for. Uh, the gimbals are pretty nice and smooth. I really don't have any problems with those. I should compare them to the Jumper T-Lite, which has been my daily driver for quite a while. In the T-Lite, I hold the radio kind of more out towards the ends of my fingers when I fly and my hybrid pinching. And you can kind of hear, you know, this is a well-used radio. I've used a, a lot of flights on this little guy. So you can probably hear it kind of, especially on this right stick, kind of knocking around the center. Let's see what this does. Yeah, it's about the same. And it hasn't been nearly as well loved and used. So, uh... They're not the smoothest gimbals I've felt. The spring tension that's currently set on them, I, I find it pretty usable. You saw the flight. I was able to fly like I normally do. It wasn't stopping me. Uh, I like to have really almost sloppy stick ends, so you may find that uh, these are either too loose for you or you might want them more loose. But I think it's a good starting point at the very least. Oh, and I failed to call it out, but right underneath here, this this is going to be challenging to get in and out. Uh, the SD card right in there. Hopefully you can see that. That's, you know, it's a spring release. Let me turn this off and I'll see if I can just get it out for you while I'm on camera here. Uh, no, I can't get it out. So I'd probably have to use a tool like this. Boy, even still then, a little bit of a challenge to get that out. See if I wiggle it up. I don't want to break the SD card. We should probably replace the SD card because these are kind of notorious for not living long when they come with a radio. So if you were to replace it, how are you supposed to get it out? Let me see if I can shake it upside down. 
Hmm. Well, so I'm struggling to get that SD card out. It butts right up against the uh, base of the antenna here. Man, I it's there's hardly any room to work in there. Maybe I just need to get a different tool. Anywho, so I'm going to leave it at that. SD card access isn't exactly easy. The next thing is about flashing the internal module. And because it does have that internal Express LRS module, if your firmware flashing were to not go 100% perfect, uh, it, it is a little bit problematic to do the boot recovery that you might need to reflash uh, if it doesn't boot up normally. Uh, there's been a few cases of this online. Thankfully, the Express LRS devs have done a really nice job of coming to the aid of the community again, and they have found a fix for this, although it is going to require that you take the radio open. I have seen Tweet FPV's video, so if you have that issue, I'll link it down in the video description. He does a nice job of, of kind of explaining this issue and also walking through it. Uh, he uses an FTDI adapter, and I believe the Express LRS devs have uh, an alternative that you don't have to solder up an FTDI. I will also link that down in the video description. But basically it does mean you're gonna to have to take off the grips and take off the screws and pull the two halves apart so you can access the boot button. And you're also gonna to need to put some files on the SD card. Probably one of the big reasons why people look at this outside of it being light, compact, and small and having a foldable antenna so it's less likely to break off, uh, not having Typical switches out here like the Jumper T-Lite did also should increase your durability, especially when it comes to packing or putting it into a case, which, you know, they've already got a case for you, so durability shouldn't be an issue if you put it in the case carefully. Is the fact that it's got Express LRS at one watt, which is pretty impressive, but as we said already, there's an issue with being able to recover if your flashing doesn't go perfectly. And I'll link those two videos down in the video description. I said that once already because I think a lot of people might end up at this video because they have an issue or they need to be aware that if you buy this radio, there's the potential that you have to open the radio in order to recover from uh, flashing that does not work. Or if we power off before the flashing's done or we get disconnected, say our Wi-Fi goes down for some reason between starting the flashing and the flashing finishing. There's a myriad of possibilities, but just know that if it doesn't go 100% correct, you can recover it, but you're going to have to put in some time and some effort. Just a quick look at this. I know it, the form factor has probably been covered because I didn't review the original one that I got when everybody else had theirs. Uh, so I thought I'd just give it a once overview in case somebody was coming to the channel for the first time. They know that, you know, I do cover it, but I'm not covering it to the nth degree uh, because there's a whole host of videos uh, available on uh, the Jumper T Pro. If you are interested in looking at the Jumper T Pro, I will find some shops that have this. This is the Express LRS edition. Of course, they have the uh, 4-in-1 edition that you can get as well that you could marry the, I can't remember how you say it, like Ion, Aon module and this is a 500 milliwatt module so if you're wanting one watt and you want the jumper t pro you've got to go with the internal module or you've got to add a module of your own choosing and it needs to be a nano or small module it can't be the large you know module that goes into big square transmitters if you have any comments questions suggestions otherwise please let me know in the comments section below i appreciate your time and thanks for watching